What is thyristor? How does it function in an application? A thyristor is a semiconductor device that acts as a switch, rectifier, or regulator in electronic circuits. It is a type of silicon-controlled rectifier, SCR, and is characterized by its ability to handle large amounts of power. Here's a detailed look at its function and applications. A thyristor's functioning is centered around its ability to switch between a conducting and non-conducting state. Here's a more detailed explanation. Structure and basic operation. Structure. A thyristor consists of four alternating layers of P-type and N-type semiconductor material, forming a PNPN structure. It has three terminals. Anode, A connected to the outer P layer. Cathode, K connected to the outer N layer. Gate, G connected to the inner P layer. Basic states of operation. Forward blocking mode, off state. When a positive voltage is applied to the anode with respect to the cathode, the J1 and J3 junctions are forward biased, but the J2 junction, middle PN junction, is reverse biased. In this state, the thyristor blocks current flow, acting as an open switch. Forward conducting mode, on state. To turn on the thyristor, a small positive voltage is applied to the gate terminal relative to the cathode. This gate current initiates the breakdown of the J2 junction, allowing current to flow from the anode to the cathode. Once turned on, the thyristor remains conducting even if the gate current is removed. The device will continue to conduct until the anode current drops below a certain threshold known as the holding current. Reverse blocking mode. When a negative voltage is applied to the anode with respect to the cathode, the thyristor remains off as the J1 and J3 junctions are reverse biased. Detailed operation process. Forward blocking mode. Anode is positive relative to the cathode. J1 and J3 are forward biased. J2 is reverse biased. No current flows through the device. Triggering the thyristor. A positive voltage is applied to the gate terminal relative to the cathode. This causes a small gate current to flow, which initiates the breakdown of the reverse bias J2 junction. Electrons from the N-type layer and holes from the P-type layer are injected into the J2 junction, causing it to become forward biased. Forward conducting mode. With the J2 junction now forward biased, the thyristor starts conducting. The anode current flows freely to the cathode. The thyristor remains in the conducting state even if the gate signal is removed as long as the current through the device does not drop below the holding current. Turning off the thyristor. The thyristor can be turned off by reducing the anode current below the holding current. This can be done by interrupting the current flow in the circuit or applying a reverse voltage across the anode and cathode. When the current falls below the holding current, the J2 junction becomes reverse biased again, and the thyristor returns to the forward blocking mode. Key points. Latch on effect. Once the thyristor is turned on, it remains on, latched, until the anode current is reduced below the holding current. Gate control. The gate terminal is used to initiate the turning on of the thyristor, but it has no control over turning it off. High voltage and current handling. Thyristors are capable of handling high voltages and currents, making them suitable for power control applications. By understanding these operating principles, it becomes clear how thyristors are used in applications requiring controlled power switching, such as motor speed control, light dimming, and rectification in power supplies. A thyristor structure is essential to its functionality. It is a four-layer, three-junction semiconductor device made from alternating layers of P-type and N-type materials. Here's a detailed look at its structure. Basic structure. Layers and junctions. The thyristor consists of four layers of semiconductor material arranged in a PNPN structure. This forms three PN junctions, J1, J2, and J3. J1, between the first P layer and the first N layer. J2, between the first N layer and the second P layer. J3, between the second P layer and the second N layer. Terminals. Anode, A connected to the outermost P layer. Cathode, K connected to the outermost N layer. Gate, G connected to the P layer next to the cathode, inner P layer. Detailed layer structure. Anode, P1, the outermost layer, made of P-type material, connected to the anode terminal, N1 layer. The layer next to the anode, made of N-type material, forms the first PN junction, J1, with the P1 layer. P2 layer. The third layer, made of P-type material, 
forms the second PN junction, J2, with the N1 layer, connected to the gate terminal. N2 layer, the innermost layer, made of N-type material, forms the third PN junction, J3, with the P2 layer, connected to the cathode terminal. Visual representation. Here's a simplified cross-sectional view of a thyristor structure. SCSS. Copy code. Anode. A. P1 layer. P-type. J1 junction. N1 layer. N-type. J2 junction. Gate G. P2 layer. P-type. J3 junction. N2 layer. N-type. Cathode. K. Operation states. Forward blocking mode. When a positive voltage is applied to the anode relative to the cathode, junctions J1 and J3 are forward biased, but J2 is reverse biased. This prevents current flow through the device. Forward conducting mode. When a positive voltage is applied to the gate relative to the cathode, it injects charge carriers into the P2 layer, reducing the barrier at J2. This triggers the thyristor, allowing current to flow from the anode to the cathode. Reverse blocking mode. When a negative voltage is applied to the anode relative to the cathode, junctions J1 and J3 are reverse biased, and J2 is forward biased. This also prevents current flow through the device. Summary. Anode, A connected to the outermost P layer. Cathode, K connected to the outermost N layer. Gate, G connected to the inner P layer, next to the cathode. The precise arrangement of these layers and junctions allows the thyristor to function as a controlled switch capable of handling high voltages and currents with precise triggering via the gate terminal. The operation of a thyristor involves its ability to switch between conducting and non-conducting states based on the control signal applied to its gate terminal. Here's a detailed explanation of the thyristor's operation. Operating modes. Forward blocking mode, off state. Forward conducting mode, on state. Reverse blocking mode. Detailed operation. One. Forward blocking mode, off state. Condition. A positive voltage is applied to the anode with respect to the cathode, but no gate signal is applied. Behavior. Junctions J1 and J3 are forward biased. Junction J2 is reverse biased. The thyristor remains in a high impedance state, preventing current flow from anode to cathode. Result. The device is in the off state, blocking forward current. Two forward conducting mode, on state. Condition. A positive voltage is applied to the gate terminal relative to the cathode while the anode is still positive with respect to the cathode. Gate triggering. Applying a positive gate pulse injects charge carriers into the P2 layer. This reduces the reverse bias across junction J2, initiating the breakdown of J2. Behavior. Once J2 breaks down, it becomes forward biased. The entire thyristor structure, P and PN, becomes conductive. Current flows freely from anode to cathode. Latch-on effect. The thyristor remains in the conducting state even after the gate pulse is removed. It will stay on as long as the current through the device exceeds the holding current. Result. The device is in the on state, allowing forward current to flow. 3. Reverse blocking mode. Condition. A negative voltage is applied to the anode with respect to the cathode. Behavior. Junctions J1 and J3 are reverse biased. Junction J2 is forward biased. The thyristor remains in a high impedance state, preventing current flow. Result, the device is in the off state, blocking reverse current. Turn off mechanism. Natural commutation. The thyristor turns off when the current through it drops below the holding current during the natural zero crossing of an AC cycle. Forced commutation. In DC circuits or applications where natural commutation is not possible, additional circuitry is used to force the current through the thyristor to zero, turning it off. Methods include applying a reverse voltage or diverting the current through an alternate path. Summary of operation states. Forward blocking mode, off state high impedance, J2 is reverse biased, no current flow. Forward conducting mode, on state low impedance, J2 is forward biased after gate triggering, current flows. Reverse blocking mode. High impedance. J1 and J3 are reverse biased. No current flow. By understanding these operating principles, one can effectively use thyristors in various applications requiring controlled switching and power regulation.
Thyristors are widely used in various applications due to their ability to handle high power and provide precise control over electrical circuits. Here are some key applications. 1. Power control and conversion. AC to DC rectification. Thyristors are used in controlled rectifiers to convert AC power to regulated DC power. They allow for phase control, enabling precise control over the output voltage. DC to AC inversion. In inverter circuits, thyristors convert DC to AC, essential in applications like uninterruptible power supplies, UPS, and renewable energy systems, e.g., solar inverters. AC voltage regulation. Thyristors are used in AC voltage regulators to maintain a constant output voltage despite variations in input voltage or load conditions. 2. Motor control. Variable speed drives. Thyristors control the speed of AC and DC motors by adjusting the voltage or current supplied to the motor. This is crucial in industrial applications where precise motor speed control is needed. Soft starters. Thyristors are used in soft starter circuits to gradually ramp up the power supply to motors, reducing the inrush current and mechanical stress during startup. 3. Light and heat control. Light dimmers. Thyristors and light dimmer circuits control the brightness of lamps by adjusting the power delivered to the bulb. Heating elements. In industrial heating applications, thyristors regulate the power supplied to heating elements, allowing for precise temperature control. 4. Over-voltage protection. Surge protectors. Thyristors are used in surge protection devices to protect sensitive electronic equipment from voltage spikes. When a surge occurs, the thyristor conducts diverting excess voltage away from the protected circuit. 5. Static switches. Solid-state relays, SSRs thyristors are key components in SSRs, providing fast and reliable switching without mechanical parts. They are used in applications requiring frequent switching and high reliability. High-voltage direct current, HVDC, transmission. Thyristors are used in HVDC systems for efficient long-distance power transmission. They convert AC to DC for transmission and then back to AC for distribution. 6. Phase Control Applications Industrial Power Control Thyristors control the phase angle of AC power, used in applications such as welding, induction heating, and electric arc furnaces. Dimmer Switches In residential and commercial lighting systems, thyristors control the phase angle to adjust light intensity smoothly. 7. Power Conditioning Power Factor Correction Thyristors are used in power factor correction circuits to improve the efficiency of power systems by reducing reactive power. Static VAR Compensators Thyristors and static VAR compensators help regulate and stabilize voltage in power transmission networks. 8. Telecommunications Battery Chargers Thyristors regulate the charging current in battery chargers for telecommunications equipment, ensuring safe and efficient charging. Uninterruptible power supplies UPS thyristors in UPS systems ensure a continuous power supply by switching to battery power during mains power failures. 9. Consumer Electronics Home Appliances Thyristors control the power in home appliances such as microwave ovens, washing machines, and air conditioners, providing features like variable speed and temperature control. Electronic Toys In electronic toys, thyristors are used to control motors and other electronic functions, enhancing the toy's performance and interactivity. By leveraging their ability to handle high voltages and currents and provide precise control, thyristors play a crucial role in a wide range of applications, from industrial automation to consumer electronics.